Since the first UFO sightings in 1947, our government has willingly told us two things about flying saucers. A, they don't exist, and B, no government agency has any more information about the subject than has already been made public. But UFO investigators charge that documents in their possession prove that the military and the government since the end of World War II have orchestrated a constant and effective campaign of disinformation concerning UFOs. Our government has flat out lied to us for 40 years or more. They've threatened people and intimidated people. They've spied on UFO groups, infiltrated UFO groups, spied on researchers, compiled dossiers. Their response is bordered on paranoia. In 1988, reporter George Knapp of Las Vegas CBS television station KLAS began investigating the U.S. government's involvement with UFOs. He says he's found evidence proving a massive cover-up that began in 1947 and continues to this day. The CIA says that it does not collect information on UFOs, and it hasn't since the 50s. There are reams of documents squeezed out of the CIA that indicate that they have on staff CIA UFO experts, agency personnel monitoring the situation on an ongoing basis. The FBI denied having any documents on UFOs in the 1970s, the early 1970s. Three years later, they released 1,700 pages of information on UFOs, documents that they had. They lie. But for UFO researchers, there is one persistent problem with those hundreds of released pages. Most, like this 1958 UFO memo to President Eisenhower, have been highly censored, essentially making them unreadable. Even this National Security Agency document explaining why UFO data should remain secret is itself almost entirely blacked out. Ironically, the official position of the U.S. government is that UFOs are not a threat to national security. Yet the agencies involved claim the censored information is vital to national security. From 1947 to 1969, the Air Force conducted Project Blue Book. Staffed with just three people, it studied 12,000 UFO sightings. All but 701 were explained to the military satisfaction. And the group that remained unexplained? It does not contain any pattern of purpose or of consistency that we can relate with any, to any conceivable threat to the United States. The Air Force closed Blue Book in 1969, but project critics weren't satisfied. The first person to head it up, Captain Edward J. Repelt, quit in disgust, wrote his own book and declared that there was something to UFOs and the Project Blue Book was nothing more than a whitewash. The United States government has spent a lot of time and effort debunking UFOs, even to the point of turning the whole thing into a joke. Of all the items in our stock catalog, there is only one which would have the high velocity and low wind resistance of flying saucers. The cover of a GI trash can. But some military people, like retired Marine Major Donald Keogh, spoke out accusing the government of hiding what it knows about UFOs. This is not an attack on the Air Force spokesman or the project spokesman. They are simply following orders to explain away all UFO sightings as quickly as possible when they become public and deny that UFOs really exist. We have not been hiding anything. The investigations have been made public. The explanations of those where there is a clear explanation have been made public. What the Air Force hadn't made public was that its pilots had been reporting UFO contacts since World War II. The Air Force was so concerned that in 1953, it even sent its own planes on a mission to seek out and photograph flying saucers. Guy Kirkwood was one of the flyers. After 19 days in the air, he and his fighter group spotted 16 objects two miles to the west. They broke rank and just started moving uh, all over. They were below us, they were above us, they were out in front of us, and accelerating, literally at lightning speed. And a dot in the distance, maybe several miles away from you at that point, maybe a pencil point, all of a sudden, closing on you at the rate of several thousand miles an hour and a 36-foot object, which is basically almost the same size as our aircraft, a 36-foot wingspan. But all of a sudden, this thing is just closing on you faster than you're able to think. 
After two more encounters with smaller groups of disks, the Air Force called off the mission because of the physical effects on the flight crews. Kirkwood went on to become a commercial pilot, and later he began to talk about his UFO encounters. That quickly earned him a visit from two government agents who told him to stop. And they said, well, if the government doesn't like the information being released, and to continue could be detrimental to your health. Kirkwood says the pilots shot thousands of feet of film of UFOs. That film has never been made public. Other government officials, including a senator and two men who became president, have tried unsuccessfully to shed...